Welcome to 5G Technology World. I'm site editor Martin Rowe. Altran, a Capgemini company, has recently developed a 5G test lab. Now, this is a test lab that covers the entire network, or at least when it's fully operational, it is mostly operational at this point. When it's completely done, it will cover end to end, that is, from the radio through to the core of the 5G network. Customers can use this lab to test their various parts of the network, regardless of which portion of the 5G network that they provide products for, be that from the RAN all the way to the core, through the front hall, the back hall, the mid hall, and so on. To find out more about this lab, we spoke with Shamik Mishra, who is the CTO of Connectivity at Altran. Shamik, thank you for speaking with us today. Can you tell us the motivation behind building the 5G lab and some of its capabilities? The, the fact that we invested in a 5G lab uh, means that there is a lot of things that still needs to be done hands-on practically on a 5G network. We know there are a lot of 5G network that's being rolled out today. Uh, and 5G network isn't straightforward in the sense that there are a lot of moving paths, there are many stakeholders, there are a lot of equipment vendors, it's a multi-vendor ecosystem. And many of our clients, whether it's both the network operators or even uh, industries, are trying to find out what is that golden configuration that really works for their set of use cases. Uh, particularly if you look at the B2B segment where operators are trying to sell private networks or 5G networks to enterprises, uh, it's not something well known or well understood. So it, it has to be tested, verified, and even we need to see whether the 5G promise actually makes sense for those use cases. Now, the part of doing that entire process, the first step would be to actually create a 5G network. Uh, where we can try those things out, right? Uh, and, the, and, and, and that's what the lab is all about. How can we create a 5G network from diverse set of network equipment uh, from different vendors, uh, try out different kinds of deployment options, different kinds of configuration options, and then see what works best in what circumstances, right? So that's the reason why we created this 5G lab. It's an end-to-end -end lab that we envision. Not everything is up and running today. I mean, it's in the process. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a process, it's a journey that we are going through. Uh, we would like to have uh, 5G radio networks, whether it's the uh, standard 5G RAN, G Node B, or ORAN, or Open RAN, uh, the core networks. Uh, the, we would like to have the edge compute platforms. We want the telco cloud infrastructure also to be part of it. Uh, then we want to run 5G applications and 5G use cases, look at orchestration, and then at some point even look at OSS, right? So it's a kind of an end-to-end -end system that we are trying to build for certain kinds of tests that we want to do. Our lab in Fundao or in Portugal is primarily focused on the network infrastructure. But of course, every network infrastructure has to be adapted for different use cases, and that's what we are trying to build here. So at this point in time, mm -hmm. the lab is dedicated to networks rather than to the wireless side of 5G. Is that correct? Oh, uh, it's both actually. Uh, at, uh, we want to build the end-to-end -end system. Uh, the wireless side of 5G is very much going to be there. It's about getting the right set of uh, regulatory approvals for the spectrum and others that we are currently working on. Of course, we have test equipment which can emulate uh, our radio side as well right now. But then also we are looking to have a full 5G lab ready in, in, in the Q1 of next year. Uh, and what are we really looking to build there are, is a set of network validation testing. When I say network validation, it means that say for example, ORAN. So ORAN would have a, a different kind of split on the radio network. There would be a remote radio head that could come from one vendor the virtual baseband or the CUs and DUs. And in fact, even the CU and the DU could be from two different vendors. There would be a, a front hall transport 
then you have to test all of that together. Uh, it has to confirm to a functional requirement that it works, of course. There are a certain set of test cases that we'll have to run to ensure that the things work. Then, of course, we have to see whether it works based on the timing requirements that the 5G promises. We also need to see whether it, it works in the sense that the, the 5G radio network is able to scale. Uh, the, the whole fact that uh, we are trying to build 5G ORAN with virtualized RAN, that would mean that the RAN should be able to work on uh, you know, fairly commoditized hardware with maybe some hardware accelerators like FPGAs for the radio part, but roughly it should be able to work on a telco cloud architecture. So we have to build that telco cloud architecture and then run the virtual baseband on top of it. And also some of our clients are looking to figure out how to certify these network elements, whether these network elements actually work in tandem with a certain set of standards, as well as certain set of performance requirements. Can we certify those network elements? Yes, we can. And that's the whole idea of creating this kind of a lab because end of the day, that's the root cause of uh, any test lab or any reason to you know, invest in such a test lab. So yes, I mean, the major idea is to find and test issues that uh, operator would have to face when he's or he when the operator is rolling out the network well in advance which network functions does your lab emulate and test so of course the 5g network functions the first things right so the ran and the core the transport right uh, those are the first uh, and the most important elements of the 5g network then we would like to also test the edge and telco cloud infrastructure. And remember the edge and telco cloud infrastructure can be fairly vast in terms of diversity. It could be based on uh, virtualized uh, network functions. It could be based on containerized network functions. It could be based on distributed compute, like there's an edge, there's a far edge, there's a near edge, there is a, uh, there is a central office. All of that has to be emulated. There are different workloads that would be running in different parts of the network that needs to be tested. Their performance <coughs> requirements would be different. Far edge has a different set of requirements as compared to a near edge and as well as compared to a central office that has to be tested. And then of course we have to test the edge compute platforms which are uh, going to host not just these network functions but also third party applications. So. The, the whole network into a network, whether the data center architectures or the micro data center architectures of the edge uh, are good enough for such kind of tests are very, very important for us. We also need to see how the overall transport network works from, uh, from the fact that there would be a front hall as well as uh, the mid hall and the back hall networks. But then we would also like to see where are the bottlenecks when it comes to virtualized RAM. Uh, because virtualized RAN is not, uh, it is mainstream to a certain extent, but it's still not widely tested and used in, in, with certain kinds of load. And that's what we would like to test as well. Once this entire network infrastructure is up, we would like to look at 5G use cases, right? For example, if in, in, in manufacturing circumstances, the use cases would need the network to be more time sensitive. Uh, so, uh, and that's something which would come in the radio network in release 17 of 3GPP, or even release 16 for that matter, we would like to see whether those use cases actually make sense uh, in, in 5G network. Uh, the fact that the lower latency and reliability that 5G network promises, does it actually translate into a, a 5G use case improvement in terms of performance, in terms, in terms of uh, validation, in terms of uh, the, the monetization aspect of an enterprise, that also has to be tested. It's not just running an app. It has to, we have to see how, the, how much of this app is network aware, whether network awareness changes the behavior of the use cases, will it improve the overall performance? All of that will require the network to be, uh, well, agile enough. Uh, agile is a bit abused word, but I would say it's, it has to, we have to see whether the network can be modified easily to adapt to new kind of requirements. We also have to find golden configuration for a certain kind of use case. This is exactly the configuration that works. So we call them blueprints. So we have to validate those blueprints. And then of course, end, end of the day, we have to figure out whether these network functions and the use case with a, in a certain scale is able to perform when we increase the number of devices. The devices could be emulated for that matter. And we're working with test and equipment manufacturers 
to see whether the scale of the network has any impact on the network's performance. So that's a little far away in the roadmap, but that's the eventual goal. How do you quantify all of these tests? How do you, uh, how do you measure all of these, this various performance and how do you quantify it? A very good question. Actually, we are creating two types of test, uh, test planning. One, of course, is the functional and interoperability tests. So basically, when two different vendors work together in a lab, say a RAN from vendor one uh, and a remote radio head from vendor two and a core network from vendor three, then an end-to-end -end performance requirement should translate across all the network. And then, of course, you have the transport in between, right? So if uh, an end-to-end -end requirement has a certain latency, say just to give you an example, then there must be uh, a certain requirement that has or a certain latency budget that has to be imposed on each of these network functions. And that's what we need to see whether this performs. I'm just giving a specific example. There will be many such, such use cases. Uh, secondly, what uh, we want to measure is uh, how, how the, uh, the compliance or I would say the conformance of the network function is to standards. Uh, that would be pretty much important, particularly the fact that open networks means that the network equipment should be able to be uh, exposing APIs which can be used for management of the network functions in a, in a way that can be automated. So for example, if I want to automate the orchestration or I want to do or build an artificial intelligence based uh, self-organizing networks, for example, or I want to create a machine learning based network management system, then I should be able to collect telemetry data through from these network functions and then translate that into an automation principle. And that must work. And so those are the certain aspects, how open the network is, how much they're conforming to standards, how much, how, how easy it is to change configuration in the network. Uh, how are the perform, of course, the performance. Uh, and so these are the measurements that we would eventually do. Uh, now, there are, we are, end of the day, it's a business, right? So it's not really meant to be a, a kind of a community testing lab. No, it's not. It's a, it's a business for us. So we expect our customers uh, to use that lab and also uh, contract us in a way to help them test and validate in, in, in certain different kind of interoperability scenarios, which eventually would help and enrich their product. So that's the whole idea of the lab. Now, will we make the measurements public? Most probably no, uh, because it would be, it would be done uh, through, uh, through a certain contract with a network equipment provider who would like to know what's the, what's the state of their, uh, of their network, of their network equipment, and, and of course, that would be very much within the a business construct or the business constraint. However, we are open to see how we can involve this lab in different community initiatives. That's, we are very much open about that. But we need to actually look at it in, uh, you know, in depth, see the different community initiatives and see if some of the, uh, some of the measurements and results can actually be contributed back to the community, but that would be extremely case-to-case -case basis and most likely only on open source components like uh, maybe the, the platforms, the orchestrators, the radio intelligence controllers, the network AI part of it, things which are purely open source. Uh, definitely, we would like to contribute our test results back to the community. Shamik, your lab certainly has a lot of computing power. And you've mentioned already that you intend to expand the lab by adding the radio part of the network. What other plans do you have for expanding the network's capabilities? The first priority for us is actually to build, uh, build the radio side of it, uh, because we already have the 4G core network. Uh, we are in the process of getting the 5G core network up and running, the standalone core. Uh, what we are now actually focusing on is the, can we get the radio side of the uh, of the network up and running, which we would actually very soon uh, get that up uh, up and uh, up and running uh, quite soon. Then we are also discussing with quite a few test equipment vendor, and you know all of them. I don't I don't want to take names, uh, so that we can emulate RAN and Core uh, as mainly UEs as well. Uh, to generate more traffic in, inside the network to see how, how much the network is resilient uh, in terms of uh, high density 
uh, testing. Uh, we are also uh, looking to uh, look at SD-WAN equipment, uh, not just RAM. So SD-WAN equipment is also equally priority for us uh, because that's a, a significant market that we are chasing. Uh, we are looking at uh, the data centers to move towards fully containerized uh, far edge and central office architectures, primarily using Kubernetes distributions. Say for example, Red Hat OpenShift, but then there could be others as well. Uh, we are looking to integrate orchestration, both open source as well as proprietary orchestrators, uh, open source, for example, ONAP and OSM, and then proprietary orchestrators from different vendors. Uh, and then we are looking to close on a few radio unit vendors, radio unit who would provide the remote radio heads, uh, uh, which is going to be the key to, uh, to the overall network part of the, of the solution. So, and then of course, we, as I mentioned, we have our own set of uh, solutions around RAN, Core and Edge. So all of this would come together. In the next couple of quarter, we have two major milestones. One of course is to ensure that we have the 5G interoperability testing readiness with partner 5G ORAN, uh, with Altran uh, enabled uh, data centers and orchestration, as well as maybe even Edge Cloud. And then also we want to use our partner 5G and 4G core and test equipment vendors to create the entire end-to-end -end system. So this is what our major milestone that's going to come up in the next quarter or so. Thereafter, we are going to look at end-to-end uh, -end integration of uh, the transport side of the network as well. So look at different vendors who can bring in uh, disaggregated cell side gateways and front hall transport for uh, for the 5G RAN. We're also looking at different independent software vendors who can bring applications for 5G, particularly for different kinds of uh, industries like manufacturing, automotive and uh, aerospace and others. Uh, we ourselves do a lot of use case development in 5G. So this lab gives us an opportunity to test our own stuff and which is uh, primarily a very strong business for us today because we are looking to build a, a catalog of 5G use cases, which would leverage the network awareness of the 5G network. So all of this would happen in the next uh, well, couple of quarters, I guess. Can you walk me through the process of mm -hmm. a, a client comes to you and says, I have something that I want to test. How do mm -hmm. I connect it to your network? How do I get started? And, and what can I expect? Uh, from your from your company in terms of um, in terms of reports on, on the yeah, testing. Good, very good question. So to begin with, this is a fully uh, remotely. It it can be connected over the internet. So basically, if a client wants to connect to the lab, uh, they can connect. It's a fully secured and a security assessed uh, lab. So uh, a client can easily connect over the internet and, uh, and actually try it out. There are many clients who actually look at isolated environments, uh, which we provide. So dedicated environments, which they can use for say a three month sprint to test a certain part of their equipment, which is perfectly fine. Or there are certain clients who want to have a, a dedicated set of environment to run some use cases. Uh, that's also okay. Uh, we also have staffed, uh, it's a staffed lab. It's not like a, a lab which is there uh, and uh, somebody just has to use it. Uh, it's a completely staffed lab. That means there are experienced test architects and test uh, engineers, network engineers, uh, software developers who are associated with the lab who can help the operators onboard any kind of use case. Uh, we also are uh, going to provide fully automated service. So we are looking to create uh, different kinds of automation suites, which, uh, which a client can actually use. Uh, and then uh, once all the testing is done, then as part of the contract or whatever is the engagement model we have with the client, we would be providing necessary test results, reports, configurations. Uh, those are going to be project to project basis based on uh, what is required for that specific uh, specific initiative. What does it take to build this 5G lab? What challenges did you face and what decisions did you have to make in deciding on its architecture? From a technical standpoint, uh, the major decision that we had to take is what is the architectural 
approach we would have for the lab. As you know, there are many, many approaches. This lab being customer centric, that means that we would like to change the configuration of the lab based on customer requirements. It's not that we would have one configuration and that's it. And, uh, and that's what you have to use. That's not what we wanted to do from the beginning. So we wanted to have a set of infrastructure that can be modified uh, based on the use case and the requirement from the client. So that was very clear. So that meant we had to provision the ability to run different kinds of uh, architectures. Uh, for example, ORAN itself might have multiple architectures and we should be able to, uh, to deploy and test that. There could be different kinds of uh, orchestrators. There could, be, uh, there could be certain clients who are just trying to look at cloud native way, whereas there could be certain clients who wants to look at it in a more formal Etsy Mano kind of orchestration. So we had to invest a lot of time uh, and our efforts to ensure that all of these uh, different deployment models are possible. So we had to do the blueprinting, we had to do a bit of testing, we had to ensure that the right set of infrastructure is available for these different and diverse deployments. The second part and perhaps the, the most difficult part was actually to get through the different partnership models with all the vendors and infrastructure providers so that we actually create uh, the blueprint for these different deployments. Uh, the third part, of course, which is still we are navigating is the regulatory aspects about the radio side, uh, which uh, hopefully will get sorted very soon. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's something I cannot comment on. That's more uh, managed by the, the Portugal team there. Uh, and finally, the, the challenge is actually to keep the testing uh, requirements or the test plans up to date and as close as possible to how the standards are evolving and when I say standards, it's not just what 3GPP writes in the documents, but also open networks, right? So open source, uh, APIs, uh, the fact that there are multiple different uh, forums that's working on it. Uh, there is Etsy, there is uh, Linux Foundation, there are different foundations that are all trying to build open source based uh, solutions for 5G networks. So we have to ensure that we put our bets on a certain uh, set of ecosystem, not, or not try to boil the ocean, that won't work. So the, the biggest challenge was actually to decide what the ecosystem would look like. And though I say it as a challenge, but frankly, this comes out from, the, from our customers. So our customer's preference ends up becoming our preference. Uh, and based on the maximum number of customer requirements, uh, we end up with uh, a certain architecture that we feel is good enough uh, for the next few uh, important tests and trials that we want to do in this lab. Okay, Shamik, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate uh, you taking some time today to speak with us and I hope to uh, work with you again in the future. Absolutely, Martin, it was a pleasure. <laughs>